Okay folks, this is part two of a seminar for coho salmon fishing in Puget Sound rivers. So stick around and enjoy the information. The reason I fish these fine wire hooks is because when I hook a fish, the fish stays on. I haven't yet to straighten a hook on a number four vision fine wire hook. Has, hasn't happened. But I've straightened these hooks on a log, a tree branch, and I've pulled it right out of the water, point felt fine, straighten it, put that bend back in with those pliers, and I'm back to fishing. I don't have to retie. So I like the fine wire hooks because let's face it, there's a little bit of stuff in the Skykomish and Snohomish River system, or even the Skagit. You wanna go fish the same techniques in the Skagit? Knock yourself out. Eggs. Do not discount eggs for coho, okay? And I know some guys are like, oh, I don't want to waste my eggs that I'm going to go steelheading with fishing for coho, right? But what do coho have? More eggs. It's time to cycle your eggs out anyway, right? Eggs work. But if you're the stingy kind of egg hoarder that you are, and we, we know, go ahead, it's all right, you can raise your hand. Easy eggs work, guys, they work well. The ones on the left are the easy eggs. They look pretty similar to real eggs, and they do work. But what do you notice here? What's the difference? There's something missing between the easy egg setup and the egg setup. What's missing? The cheater. The reason the cheater's missing is because easy eggs are plastic. They float. You put easy eggs and a cheater on, it's sticking straight up like this, wrapping around your main line. Don't put easy eggs on a hook setup with a cheater or a corky, okay? Use them by themselves and play with it. You need to see how many can I get away with to float two hooks. How many can I get away with to float one hook? Do I want a smaller presentation or do I really want a big clump? If I put a big clump, is my leader longer or shorter? These, all these questions are valuable because it has a bearing on how you catch fish with easy eggs and it also has a bearing on where and how you're gonna catch fish with the easy eggs. This is about a five egg clump. You pull them off in a string, you tie it in an overhand knot, and do one more overhand knot, and you put it in the middle between your two hooks. I put yarn in the egg loop, and this is invaluable. I put yarn in there for scent. And yes, the easy eggs come scented, but I like more scent. And I scent them literally every 10 casts. You cast, 10 times or we hit a drift 10 times, I bring, bring your stuff out, I take my rag, I squeeze the yarn to get the extra old scent off, I re-scent them, okay? So that's what the scent's on there for. Easy eggs work. Yes, sir? What scents am I using? I have a variety, I carry a lot of scents, but I'm gonna show you what I'm using right now. I'm gonna reach back here in the boat and grab what I'm using right now and what I used last year and it was money. I'm using the uh, Dick Knight Attractant, the DNA. This one here says Shad Gel. It has a combination of shrimp and krill. This one says Salmon Gel. It has a combination of herring, anchovy, squid, and krill. These are the two I used last year, and these are the two I'll use this year. In fact, Saturday, opening day, I put the shad gel on my dick knight. And we'll talk about scenting the, uh, the spoons here. Plugs, you got wiggle warts, your fat fish, your Brad's Wiggler series, you guys, if you haven't fished plugs, plugs run different depths. You need a variety because you may be in seven, eight feet of water and you can flatline one plug in one set of water, but you go to another set piece of water and you're in 13 to 15 feet. 
you're not even getting close to those fish. Okay? And I firmly believe these fish hit the river, they get into the Snohomish, Skycomish system. They are not in there feeding. They're biting out of aggression. They're biting out of instinct. So you need to aggravate them. If your lure can't get to them to aggravate them, then you need to get it down to them. So different size plugs. Or maybe put on a jet diver with your plug behind it so you can get deeper. You know, I, I have. In fact, I, I, I do. Um, back when they, Fish and Game changed the law and they said, hey, you know, you've all got to have single points. Well, I went through and I changed every freaking hook I had. And then they go, oh, okay, sorry, party foul. You can go ahead and use trebles, right? I didn't change mine back and I really like the singles. I put barrel swivels on them so I get some extra rotation so that fish isn't going to twist off. So you'll notice, like on my Tad Poly, I have a single on here. Oh, that hook's sharp. I've got a single on there, and I've got a barrel swivel between the hook and the lure. Which body, the back or the front? The back. the back. I take my fronts off, okay? That's what I do. So, spinners. I think spinners are very applicable in the river. If you've tried everything else, and you're a little frustrated, you've got spinners, maybe you're just a spinner guy. Spinners are great for pitching up into wood. Coho like getting in the wood. Normally, normally this time of year I'd say don't fish the wood, you need to wait. They're already there. They're there because they have nowhere to go. The river's so low, they're not shooting up. I mean, if they're shooting up in the sky, they're doing it at night and they're really working up over those riffles because there's only this much of water. And I'm not seeing them run up into the sky at night and there's gotta be, I mean, thousands and thousands of fish up there in the upper river. Spinners get you up into the wood. It also gives, if you've got anglers that are young and they're new to it, and they're the kind of people who can't sit still and be patient, give them a spinner and just let them start casting it. Spinners, you can get away with casting them up river a little too far, it's real little faster. Cast them straight across, real normal. Cast them in the back, don't even reel them at all. The current will let them flow. So spinners are valuable, they do work. Jigs work, we talked about this before. Variety of colors and a variety of sizes. You really want to go between a quarter to three eighths. Depends on how deep your water is and how fast you need that jig to get down under the float or if you're going to go straight to the bottom. You've got to get on the bottom at the top of the hole and work it through the hole. If you're throwing a quarter ounce and you've got too much flow, you're never going to get to the bottom. You'll touch bottom at the end of the hole, if that makes sense. Yes, sir. So the question is, when you cast, if you're on the bank and you cast a plug out there, how much reeling are you doing to get that plug to work? I like my plugs to hit bottom as soon as I can get them. So it depends on how deep. And it's kind of tough when you're fishing from the bank and you're trying to fish a plug. It, it is, let's, let's be honest. So you cast out there. You know, hey, if you're standing on the bank and you see a boat go by, ask him, say, how deep is it right there? He'll say, oh, it's nine feet. Forget about it. You're not even going to get deep enough with a plug, okay? Because you're just not going to get enough pull to fish all of the water you need to effectively. There's other ways to fish that water. But I want to get it out there, let the plug hit, and I'm going to give it a pull and really pull that plug down, and I want to get it as deep as I can, as fast as I can, and then I'm going to reel. And if I can bounce bottom, then I'm going to adjust my reel speed based bouncing on the bottom, okay? So let's talk about what I'm going to do this year, which is what I did last year, and I did it the year before, and the year before that, and it works. Guys, I love to fish, but I love seeing people catch fish even more. And I need to get my fish into clients. And if I want to get, them into, get my fish into clients fast, this is what I'm going to use, okay? My primary lure and method. I'm going to fish Dick Knight Spoons. It's not because I'm on Dick's pro staff, because I fished his spoons long before I was invited to his factory team, okay? I fish them because they work. 
the first fish I caught in Washington State when I came here was on a Dick Knight spoon. And I caught a lot of them that day. Holy crap. When I caught these fish, I thought, well, this is what fishing's like here. This is a no-brainer. This is easy. Little did I know. There's a lot more to it. But they work. And they, work, they have worked for years. If I'm not fishing a Dick Knight spoon, I am fishing cheaters and yarn. That's my number two. Cheaters and yarn. And I'm scenting that yarn up like crazy. I've got that set up right here. If I'm going to stick with the free drifting or the drift fishing, my number three are eggs. Normally, I would not even start fishing eggs until mid-October. I won't even start fishing eggs until mid-October. This year might be a little different because everything's different. We've got lots of fish. But my number one is drift fishing the Dick Knight spoons. If I'm gonna pull plugs, if I'm gonna troll, I'm gonna troll Dick Knight spoon, number one, and I'll troll it behind a, uh, either a jet diver or like a Brad's diver. John Thomas with Rotten Chum Guide Service out front at a mini clinic was showing you a Dick Knight behind a Brad's diver. Brad's diver hits, you know, seven, eight feet. Yeah. It's the ticket if you're trolling, okay? Just put a fish on on Saturday, Brad's diver, six foot leader, 50-50 Dick Knight spoon, trolling the lower Snohomish. Beautiful fish, I saw it come out of the water. I guarantee it was hooked. The seal wanted it more than we wanted it, and he won. Very frustrating. So Dick Knight spoons. There's several methods you guys can fish a Dick Knight spoon. I mean, you can drift fish them, you can cast and retrieve, you can plunk them. Who are my plunkers? Oh yeah. Hey, don't discount plunking. Plunking is great for silvers. A lot of guys are like, ah, you know, you plunk for pinks and you know, maybe you still in the winter when you want to take a nap on the beach. Plunking works for silvers. Okay, don't discount it. If you have flow, try plunking. It does work. Okay? Two, three foot dropper, six, seven foot leader. Let that dick knight just do its thing, hold it right there in the river. If you're on the bank, use pyramid weights. If you're in a boat, use cannonballs, okay? You control them like I just talked about. Okay, drift fishing is one of the go-to methods for dick knight lures. So if your boat is sitting in the river and the flow is coming from your right to left, you're casting out on the uh, port side of the boat, you need to imagine if this is the back and this is in front, you need to cast in the right spot. All right, guys, that wraps it up for part two. Make sure you move on to part three for some more information on fishing coho salmon in the Puget Sound rivers. Three Rivers Marine and Tackle, your one-stop store for all your fishing needs.